Hi there, Noble County. It's Christine Gelly from the Noble County Extension Office, and I am coming to you live from my kitchen today. If you were listening last week, you would expect me to be at the fairgrounds to do this live stream today. But things have changed for me. The fair is going on, and I hope that if you've been wanting to watch the shows that you found the live stream information. If you haven't seen that yet, it is available on our Facebook page. I'll make sure I share it in the comments or in the description of this video. You can watch the shows as they're being live streamed if you have family or friends that are showing um, but you're not able to be on the fairgrounds. As you know, it is restricted to immediate family of the junior fair participants to be in the show's um, areas to watch. But they are being live streamed, so you can catch those. Um, I'm not at the fair because I had an injury <laughs> over the weekend, just an accident playing on the playground, and um, I have crutches at this moment, so it doesn't really uh, go well to be on the fairgrounds with, cut with crutches and my job was gonna to be to run paperwork. So I'm not going to be a very efficient runner with crutches. So, home in the kitchen. What we are going to do is talk about a fair related topic and it's going to go along with something that I had planned to do this weekend, but I'll do today instead. And that is make gyros. Many people wait all year to get a gyro at the fair. And if you call them gyros, that's okay, but that is incorrect. <laughs> the Greek word gyro, or pronounced as hero, is spelled G-R-Y-O. G-Y-R-O. I'm not I'm not a great speller either. It's in it's in the description of the video. Gyro. G-Y-R-O. Gyro. Okay? We're gonna make some. You won't get to see the finished product in today's video, but I'm just going to show you how I prepare the meat to get it in the crock pot. Um, of this is not going to be family consumer science uh, demo today, but it's specifically related to um, the use of products like lamb and goat and how to use them in your kitchen. And if you happen to be a supporter of the Junior Fair sales and you find yourself with a cut of lamb or goat, um, this is something that you could use it for. Many people are missing their fair euros, but you can make something similar at home. During the state fair, I usually work the Euro stand for the Ohio Sheep Improvement Association, and I can share with you some of what we do to prepare Euros in that stand. So I'll show you some of the things that I've gathered up today, and if I hobble around and I fall down, I won't, but if I do, don't worry, Bethany is here <laughs> with me, and Keegan's actually here as well today. So things I have gathered up here are my slow cooker. This is a uh, six quart slow cooker. Um, I've got a cup of hot water. I have my leg roast in this container. It's been um, seasoned and um, marinating for a couple days. It's not really marinating in a liquid, but it's been seasoned and in the refrigerator for a few days. Um, I've got some fresh herbs here from the garden. Ideally mint would be what you'd want to use, but I actually have uh, basil because I didn't grow any mint. An onion, some garlic, a lemon, some sour cream, and this is a, a pickled salad that I started yesterday that would actually go really well with gyros. If you don't want to do um, fully fresh toppings, you could use a pickled topping for your gyro if you want. Uh, that's what I have out, and that's really all I'm going to need at this point. I did pull these out. These are mini taco shells, flour tortillas. It's the closest thing I have to a flatbread with me right now. Often your gyro is going to be served in a pita, um, but you could you can bake your own pitas if you want to. If you can't get to the store to buy them or your store doesn't carry pitas, then it's very simple type of a flatbread to make. So I might use these mini ones or I might make my own or we might just do it as a gyro salad. Um, some of the seasonings that I've used, I'll show you. This is the lamb leg roast. It is totally covered in, in seasonings right now. Like I mentioned, um, I was preparing this on Saturday before I had my accident. <laughs> um, so my plan was to get the lamb seasoned, put in the refrigerator, run to the store and get some feta cheese, fur toppings, and some pita bread, um, and some fresh mint. 
to make my tzatziki sauce. I didn't get that far. So the lamb has actually been seasoned and then set in the refrigerator for three days at this point. Um, it does take a couple days to thaw if you have your roast in the uh, freezer. And this is only part of a leg. Clearly it's fairly small. This container's not very big. So this is about half of a leg. And um, of course that means it's gonna cook faster than a whole leg, but typically your leg roasts are gonna be somewhere between three to seven pounds if you're buying them at the grocery store or from your butcher. Some of the seasoning that I put on, well, all the seasonings, I have them right here in my cabinet. I started with salt, fully salted all the sides, then coated with black pepper, and then I drizzled with some olive oil to help get the other seasonings to stick. I did an all over sprinkle of garlic powder, oregano, lemon pepper seasoning, rosemary, and also thyme. Where did my thyme go? That's just ground thyme. I also put thyme on there. Um, and then, here it is. I uh, squeezed the juice of one half of a lemon all over, and then I cut up the slices and I put it in the bowl with the lamb to marinate as well. So these gyros are a Greek recipe. So uh, very common in Greek cooking are lemon and garlic. Lemon, garlic, rosemary, and oregano are kind of the base seasonings that you'll see in a lot of Greek recipes, and those go really well with lamb. One other thing that I'm gonna add that I don't have out yet is one beef bouillon cube. Uh, you can use beef broth, you could use chicken broth, you could use vegetable broth. If you have lamb broth, you could use that as well. But I'm just gonna add that to my crock pot right now for some additional moisture while the meat is cooking. Whenever you put meat um, in the crock pot, put the fat side up so that the fat bastes the meat while it's cooking. When we make these lamb gyros at the lamb stand at the state fair, we roast legs. So our, um, our cook there, her name is Rachel Budd, and she just roasts lamb legs all the time <laughs> for us. And um, she uses a seasoning pretty similar to this. We get it from a specific company. And um, you start the recipe just with a really nicely seasoned roasted lamb leg. And then you either shred or slice the leg into pieces. Um, and then to keep it nice and moist, if you're gonna be serving it over an extended period of time, it is nice to put it in a broth so that it doesn't get dried out. But if you're going to see to, uh, to do a roast about this size and feed your family all at once, that, that broth's not really necessary. I'm just gonna put some broth into my crock pot to help um, things not stick to the bottom and then also just help keep the, the seasonings, the aromatics going through the whole crock pot at the same time. I'm not gonna wait for this cube to dissolve. Um, I just want it to be in there. Like I said, you could use any type of broth that you have on hand, that's totally fine. The next thing that I'm gonna do is cut up an onion and um, peel some of these garlic cloves and put those in the bottom of my crock pot. Again, uh, it's less about the, the flavoring or the, like these aren't going to be part of my gyro. It's part, the reason they're in there is to uh, keep the lamb from sticking to the bottom of my crock pot. This is gonna be like a little prop to um, set on top of. And then if you like the onions after you're done cooking your leg, you can save that cooked onion and garlic and the drippings from the lamb leg and you could make a gravy or a sauce or you could use it to make noodles or something and that would be really tasty. Um, but if you're new to lamb or you have a picky eater in your home, like I do, <laughs> um, that's not really super keen on that lamb flavor. Just drain those drippings off and don't don't use them for anything because that the lamby flavor that a lot of people say they don't like it comes from the fat. So when those fat drippings um, gather at the bottom of the crock pot, that's where a lot of that flavor is. And if you like that flavor, you can use it to dilute it into broths, broths for other things, or you could choose to discard it if you're not into that flavor. I'm just gonna rinse my onion because it has a little bit of that you know, black powdery 
mold on it from being in storage. Not dangerous, I'm just gonna rinse it off so it's not in the crock pot. I did, of course, wash my hands before I started. Um, if I need a knife. If any of you are curious what I did on the playground, I fell off of the monkey bars. <laughs> and I uh, sprained something in my pelvis. <laughs> so, fortunately, I did not break anything. They were concerned, thinking that maybe I did. Um, it was extremely painful. So, I did make sure to go in and get help. But it turns out that all I need is to really take it easy and rest it. So, yay. I guess my advice for you is um, monkey bars are not designed for parents. They're designed for kids. <laughs> Who knew? Okay. So, I'm just going to... Mm, I thought I was going to quarter this onion. I think I'm going to do it in six pieces. Again, I just want this in there to keep the lamb from being stuck to the bottom of the crock pot. And this whole prep process. I mean, you would want to season the lamb like the morning before you're going to cook it and leave it in the refrigerator. Or um, you could do it the night before. You could do a couple days before. But it's not entirely necessary that you do it that far in advance. The longer, of course, that you leave it seasoned in the refrigerator, the more intense those the, the flavors of the seasonings are going to come through. Oh, I think my I think this garlic clove is aged. Oh, I got a couple good sections on here. I'm not going to do anything to these cloves except just drop them in there to get more enhanced garlic flavor. Um, some notes about cooking your lamb leg are bone in roasts actually cook faster than bone out. Um, I'm not a food scientist, so I don't exactly understand why that is, but pay attention to whether your roast that you're cooking, whether that's in the oven or in the slow cooker, if it's bone in, it will have a different cooking time than if it's bone out. So, um, I'm going to cook this leg on low and it will probably take four to six hours to reach medium rare to medium that's where I want it to be um, you don't want to overcook lamb that's where a lot of people and goat everything I'm saying when I say lamb I also mean it for goat they're very very similar meats and the cuts are very similar seasonings that work well are very similar so um, if you're thinking about this in the terms of goat it still applies okay um, you don't want to overcook it. When you overcook meats, they lose their tenderness. And um, because these cuts of meats are, these cuts of meat are often smaller than what you'll have, um, for example, for beef or for pork, it can be easier to get them too tough. And also that plays, that plays in part to the fat ratios as well. So if you are trying to decrease the amount of fat, that's in your cooking either because of flavor or because you're watching calories um, when you lose all that fat part of that fat is what helps with the texture of the meat so you do want fat present it's going to help you with flavor and also help you with cooking and meat tenderness um, but if you have too much fat it's going to give you off flavor as uh, off the flavor profile so Okay, not a chef, but I do enjoy lamb and I enjoy gyros. And if you're in the mood for some fair food, we're going to eventually get you there. Okay, so what I've got now is I just have my chunks of onion, my beef bouillon cube, um, some garlic cloves in the pot right now. I'll show you that. Hopefully not dropping it. And I'm just going to put my lamb leg on top of that. Again, my leg is already seasoned. It's been in the refrigerator for a few days. It looks kind of dark and the reason it looks like that is because um, it's been out of the freezer then exposed to the air and then I've had the seasoning on top of it. So um, I drizzled olive oil on top after I had all the seasonings on and then I also squeezed some more lemon juice. I forgot to say that when I put the lemon on I grated it first. I grated the outside of a whole lemon and I sprinkled the 
the gratings over top. I'm gonna try to set this here and hopefully you guys can see me well enough and we don't fall over. I am going to take this leg out with the wide side down. You can see the bone in here. I dropped a lemon. You can see this is the bone. Okay, so a full leg would be like this big and probably weigh about seven pounds. This I'm gonna guess is about three. Again, you can see the bone here on this side where my thumb is right here. So this would be the fat side, the fatty side. This side's gonna go up, this side's gonna go down. A lot of recipes will tell you, my phone's getting warm. A lot of recipes will tell you to sear the meat first before you put it in the slow cooker. That does, you know, enhance flavor as well, but also not totally necessary. It's still gonna cook just fine. Um, and with my current situation, I'm looking to do less work rather than more work. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this seasoned leg into my crock pot, the fatty side up. And that fat is going to baste the meat while it's cooking. If you wanted to make just a roasted leg for dinner time, um, you could add potatoes in the bottom, root vegetables, potatoes, carrots, um, so on. And you could use those to prop up the meat and then you could serve those as a side vegetable. But since I'm intending to make these into sandwiches, I'm not gonna put potatoes in here. I actually thought about, I'm gonna put the lemon slices on top so that they enhance the flavor too. And I've got a little bit more of my drippings and seasonings on here. I'm just gonna pour that on top. And that is all that I'm gonna put into the crock pot. If you, I'm gonna hobble over to the sink here real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> If you choose to make your lamb leg in the oven instead of in the crock pot, just your, your cook times are gonna be very different um, and you will need to baste the roast as it's cooking uh, so that it doesn't get super dried out. So just like every 30 minutes or so baste it, it's gonna take much, much less time to cook it. So there's tons of recipes out there to show you how to do this. I would direct you to direct you to the American Lamb Board, which is AmericanLamb.com. You can search for recipes on there based on what um, ingredients you have on hand, what cuts of meats you have. I keep saying that cuts of meats. I mean meat, singular cuts of meat. <laughs> um, you can search on there for with various search criteria to find recipes and they're they're all wonderful everyone I've tried I've been super pleased with so that's what it looks like going into the crock pot I'm gonna set it on low now um, when you are prepping your lamb to cook it's often a good idea to bring it up to room temperature before you put it um, into the cooker whether that's in the oven or on the grill or even in the crock pot um, I don't know the food science which, behind why exactly you want to do that. It helps with flavor, um, <laughs> but but that's something that, that you can do ahead of time. Def definitely if you're grilling, it helps get that sear. Now what I'm going to do that we've got our lamb in the crock pot. Again, this is going to take four to six hours. I'm going to temp check it with a thermometer. Once we get to about four o'clock today, I'm going to start checking the temperature. I've got my free meat thermometer courtesy of Family Consumer Sciences in Noble County. Um, you're going to insert that into the roast until it's about here and um, rare, medium rare for lamb is 135, medium is 50, 150 when you pull it out. Remember that as meat rests, the temperature is going to go up. It's going to cook still a little bit after you take it out of the cooker, whether that's the oven or the grill or the smoker or the crock pot. So the time that you pull it out is not exactly the temperature when it's going to be done. You're, you're going to pull it out at 150. That's what I'm shooting for. I want it to be medium. I don't think Keegan really loves it medium rare. I like it medium rare, but I think he prefers his medium. We definitely don't want to be getting to well done. If you want medium well, I believe that's 170. 
So what we're looking for is 140 for rare, medium rare, 160 for medium, 170 for medium well. But like what I'm shooting for here is I want to put this meat thermometer in. When it hits 150, I'm pulling the roast out because I want it to medium. You really got to pay attention to temp checking towards the end. Okay, slow cooking um, is a lot more forgiving if you accidentally overcook a little bit because that moisture is still in the pot and that moisture is going to really help you with the texture. But if you're grilling um, or you're roasting, it's easy to get overdone if you're not paying attention to the time and the temperature. Okay, so don't waste your hard work by not temp checking when you should. Like I said, at 4 o'clock today, I'm going to start temp checking this and then I'll pull it out and let it rest for about 20 to 30 minutes probably before I start slicing it. Um, that way it's still warm, but all the juices have had time to, to set. Um, I'll show you what I did for my marinated salad. I, I really like this kind of salad. It's not for everybody, but it's tomato, cucumber, onion salad. It's just um, a couple sliced Roma tomatoes, a whole cucumber sliced, half of a white onion sliced, and then, uh, I'm not very good at measuring things. I like to, to season with my soul, you know? <laughs> so what I did was salt, pepper, um, red wine vinegar, balsamic vinegar, and s some olive oil. And then um, just leave this sit in the refrigerator at least overnight to really allow it to, to marinate the onions. And then that, that's like a really nice, tangy, crisp, fresh, either salad on the side or it can be a topping for your gyro. Depending on where you like to get your gyros, um, often they'll serve them just like with tomatoes, cucumber, onion, and then a, a creamy cucumber tzatziki sauce. Um, but if you come to the state fair at the OSIA booth, the toppings that we offer there are lettuce, tomato, onion, black pepper, black pepper, pepper, salt, I meant black olives, and tzatziki sauce. Traditional Greek tzatziki sauce is made with Greek yogurt. I don't have any Greek yogurt. That's unflavored. I have vanilla and I have strawberry. Don't use those. <laughs> I intended to get plain Greek yogurt to make my tzatziki sauce, um, but instead I'm going to use sour cream. Um, and for the sake of dishes, I'm just using about a little more than half of this container. This is a 16 ounce. So I'm using about eight ounces of sour cream. And into this, I'm going to add some lemon juice, salt and pepper, fresh herbs, and cucumber. If you wanted to put that through a food processor, you could to make it extra creamy, um, but also not necessary. Just You just wanna break up the ingredients so they're small enough that the sauce isn't chunky while you're eating it. You still want it to be like, like minced. You probably want to mince these ingredients and then mix them into your uh, sour cream or your Greek yogurt. There's a lot of recipes too for tzatziki sauce. I mean, the idea here is you're trying to get fresh herbs in with that creamy sauce, and then that's going to play really well with the acidic touches in this recipe, like the, the onions, the tomato, the lemon that's on the lamb. They're all going to really want that creaminess to go with it. And if you don't have feta cheese, you can use a different kind of cheese if you want. Typically some kind of a, a white cheese, goat cheese is really good on a gyro. You could probably use like mozzarella, but that's gonna put, give you more of an Italian flair than a Greek flair. We might just not have cheese this time because feta was also on my list of things to get. So anyway, let me chop up these herbs. What I've got here is basil. So, you know, I've never made tzatziki with basil, but there's a first time for everything, right? Typically you would use a use fresh mint. You could use dried mint. You could use dill. That would be really yummy. And then just like, you know, marinating the lamb before you're ready to cook it, allow this sauce to sit for a while so that the flavors really get time to blend together and you have a really nice flavorful creamy sauce. Oh my goodness, it smells so good already. I wish there was smell of vision Oh, that smells so good. I'm just going to add those herbs into my sour cream. If you don't have a lemon on hand, you can use lemon juice out of a bottle or you could use some vinegar. You're really trying to get that 
the, a little bit of tang added into the sauce. I'm just going to sprinkle salt on top again, like I said, not great at measuring. Some pepper on there. I think I am going to put a little bit of dried dill. I do have some fresh dill outside, but I'm not going back out to um, battle the dogs to get to it. They're, they're concerned about what's wrong with my <laughs> body, but they're just, you know, so large they can be a little pushy. Um, and my lemon. Okay, so I've got my herbs, my sour cream, my salt, my pepper, and then I just added some dill. I'm going to cut this lemon in half. And you could grate this lemon. You could add the lemon. Sorry about that, guys. My phone was getting warm. It had warned me before. <laughs> um, but we'll see how far we can make it if you're still here with me. I'm just going to squeeze this lemon juice in to the sauce, mix it up, and put it in the refrigerator. And then once all of this is, uh, has sat in the refrigerator for a little while and my lamb leg is done, we'll slice the leg and then we'll dress our gyros. Again, you could start with a pita or a flatbread. You could even use a tortilla if you don't have um, a flatbread to work with. You could make your own flatbread, or you could just serve this on salad. But I'll slice up the leg. Um, topic, we'll probably use the marinated salad for us. I'll see. I don't know what I'm going to feed Beth. We'll figure it out. And then uh, top with a nice full dollop of tzatziki sauce. I really love my feta cheese on my gyra, so I, I will miss the feta on my year row <laughs> but we'll make do we'll make it another time too uh, so again if you one more try guys we'll try to finish this up um, if you find yourself in the mood for some fair food and you want to try your hand at making your own gyros or you wind up purchasing someone's lamb or goat from fair and you wind up filling your freezer definitely check out AmericanLamb.com for recipes and also cooking tips they've got everything to get you uh, from I know nothing to now I'm a serious chef. So uh, check that out for more inspiration. And I hope that if you're at the fair, best of luck to all our youth that are showing. Best of luck to all the parents out there trying to keep everything in line. Uh, thank you to all the fair board members, the livestock sale committee, and the folks at our extension office uh, getting all the jobs done. So this is going to work for my fair food today. I will post some pictures of what it looks like once we get around to eating it this evening. I hope it's been fun today, and uh, we'll be live again tomorrow with another topic at noon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you later.